So in London, uh, some years ago, there was a, a strategy that was tried in a very poor area of London to see, to explore what might be of value there. Um, and the test they did was this. They took two streets that were parallel to one another, about a mile apart, both in a, in a pretty impoverished part of town, which was also a place of high crime. And one of the streets they cleaned every day. They swept, they fixed the light fixtures, they cleaned up the graffiti, they planted the planters so that they had flowers growing in them, and they tended it every day. And they went back, and for the course of a year, <clears throat> on that particular avenue, things were made beautiful. The other street, 10 blocks away, same street, same lighting, same neighborhoods, and so forth, left the same. And after a year, they found that the level of crime on the street that they had made beautiful had dropped by 50%. It says something about us as human beings that when we're dehumanized or when we're forced to be in situations where there isn't harmony and beauty, it affects us and it affects the way that we treat one another. You could call this harmony or this beauty a grace even in the face of pain, the sensibility of a poet. And our heart needs poetry and and art as much as the earth needs water and rain. William Carlos Williams writes, you can't get the news from poetry, yet men and women die every day for loss of what is found there. It's not about the news, but it's about some spirit that we carry. Poetry is the music of life, the harmony, the painting. Um, It's also the truth-telling. And really, great poets speak in a kind of condensed language. Emily Dickinson writes, Because I did not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. One short line gives you something to contemplate. Or, after the Chernobyl nuclear accident, now we think about Japan, the wind told the story that was being suppressed by the government. It gave away the truth when others would not do so. It carried the story of danger to other countries. The wind was a prophet, a scientist, and a poet. And so to have a poetic sensibility is to begin to find the rhythm or the harmony of language that matches the beauty of the world. 